Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs with Got That Funk. How you doing? On Thursday on the Breakfast Club channel, I made a video discussing an aspect of the relationship between police in America and the public. It makes some pretty important points, and if you've not seen it, I would encourage you to go over there and watch it after you've watched this video. You don't need to see it first, though, to understand this video. In the comment section of Thursday's Breakfast Club video, my friend Exiled made a very good point. She said that we need more education, both with members of the public and law enforcement officers, regarding the rights and responsibilities of both parties when it comes to instances where the police and public have to interact. And I agreed with her emphatically at the time she made the comment. And as a result of her comment, I decided to look into it. You know, what are your rights? What are your responsibilities? When do you have to comply with the police and when don't you? Uh, what level of compliance is necessary uh, in an interaction with the police? What are the responsibilities of the police? What are the limitations of their authority? These are very important questions, and I thought I had a pretty good idea. But as a result of the research I did, as a result of her comment, I have found out that I didn't know as much as I thought I did. And I'm going to leave some of the reading that I did this weekend in the description box below. In the description box, I have left three links for you, which are the bare bones of what you need to know in terms of your rights and responsibilities, what the police are allowed to do, what they're not allowed to do, what they're likely to do, even if they're not allowed to do, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Definitely, after you've watched this video, read all three of those sources, because forewarned is forearmed. If you can make an informed decision, should you have some sort of confrontation with a police officer, the more empowered you are to make sure that you protect your rights and don't put yourself in any disadvantage. Now, there's one thing that has occurred to me, the main point of this video. Um, you know, I'm not going to go through some sort of laundry list of do's and don'ts uh, if you have some sort of you know, confrontation with a police officer because it's a bit difficult to do that comprehensively in a video because we have 50 different states, each with its own set of laws to be enforced, and unfortunately each with different uh, policies regarding how law enforcers can uh, discharge their duties. So it's a bit difficult to have a sort of across-the-board set of recommendations of do's and don'ts, and those that are appropriate are in the reading in the description box. But as a result of the reading I've done, combined with some of the videos that I've watched over the past weekend, I've come to a pretty disturbing conclusion. You see, for the past year or so, I've watched all the most prominent talked about police shootings videos. And over this weekend, as part of my research for this video, I watched a lot of police brutality videos as well. And regardless of which, which topic it is, whether it's a brutality video or a killing video, um, in the comments section, you'll notice a few things. First of all, you'll always get some people who are there defending the police, who are saying that, uh, you know, if the citizen didn't behave in blank manner, the officer wouldn't have had to respond with blank response, you know. Um, and I've always had the opinion when I watch these videos that uh, the officers are unnecessarily escalating the situation prior to it going completely awry and them beating someone up or shooting someone. And I still think that's the case. I still think that the officers are unnecessarily escalating the situation. But prior to this weekend, prior to the reading that I've done down below, I sort of thought that this uh, escalation on the part of the police officers was not deliberate, that it was just the result of poor training or poorly executed training by their officer. And I no longer think that to be the case. This is just my opinion, and I know I could be wrong, but quite frankly, I think I'm right, and quite frankly, I think you'll agree with me if you follow my line of reasoning. Because what I learned as a result of this weekend's reading is an officer might come into a situation with this level of authority, but their authority can increase as the situation develops. And the primary way that they can increase that authority is if they feel that they have legitimate reason to fear for their own safety. So, if an officer becomes belligerent towards a member of the public, and the member of the public responds in kind, regardless of the provocation on the part of the officer, if you become belligerent to the point where the officer is entitled to perceive you as combative and potentially hostile, potentially dangerous to him or her, you have basically handed them carte blanche to behave towards you in a more aggressive manner. That is an unfortunate fact that I wasn't really aware of. So that has led me to conclude that this 
escalation on the part of the officers in these videos is deliberate. They are trying to increase their authority by provoking you into responding in such a way that you basically hand them that license. So it is within your own best interests to maintain your cool as best as you possibly can. Don't raise your voice. Don't laugh at an officer. Don't be sarcastic. Don't be snide. Be as polite as you possibly can and as calm as you possibly can despite any and all provocation. If you can maintain that, you are limiting their scope of authority to the best of your ability. It's still entirely possible that the officer might exceed their authority. But if they do so, despite you not being in any way hostile, you have strengthened your own position. And quite frankly, any officer who is behaving professionally shouldn't do so in the first place. If the officer is behaving professionally and you're maintaining your cool, that should expedite the situation as quickly as it possibly can with a minimum of detrimental effects towards you and a minimum of sacrificing your own rights. Because here's the thing, um, as their authority goes up, your rights effectively go down. This may or may not be a deliberate policy on the part of police departments, but uh, if this can occur to me, you know, that an officer can basically empower themselves by firing up a citizen, I'm a pacifist, and if that can occur to me, you can bet that it occurs to everybody who wears a badge. Everybody. Whether or not they behave like that would be down to the conscience of the officer, and not just their conscience, but uh, their company that they keep, and also, you know, everybody's entitled to have a bad day sometimes, we're all in different moods, etc. You know, and sometimes you're just having one of those days where you don't want anyone to fuck with you, and I'm sure police officers are not exempt from that mood. So, basically what I'm trying to say is, I know for a fact, having seen some exceptions on video, that just because you're as cooperative as possible and as calm as possible, that doesn't necessarily keep you out of harm's way. But it does keep you out of harm's way if you've got a professional officer. If you've got a bad officer, it almost doesn't matter if you cooperate or not. If you've got a bad officer, you're going to get it. And that's pretty much the end of it. Um, so yeah, officers are deliberately ratcheting up the tension when it comes to instances where they're confronting members of the public. There is loads of evidence of this in lots and lots of videos on YouTube. It's clear to me now that this is deliberate. And I think it's in everybody's interest, members of the public's interest and interests of police officers, that we should lobby our legislators to basically force nationwide training which focuses on de-escalation of tension. If officers are forced as a matter of doctrine to de-escalate a situation to the best of their ability to de-escalate it, um, it's safer for them, it's safer for members of the public, and it should expedite the situation much quicker. So I think it's in everybody's interest that we insist on de-escalation on the part of the police. Having said that, that's tomorrow. That's legislation. That's going to take ages, if achievable at all. In the meantime, what we can only do is empower ourselves as citizens. Know your rights. Know when you have to answer questions. Know when you don't have to answer questions. Know what questions you have to answer. For example, if you get pulled over in your car, yes, you have to hand them your license, your registration, and your insurance. That's a given. You shouldn't have to answer any other questions. And your refusal to answer other questions ought not to be taken by a professional officer as any indication of wrongdoing on your part. In fact, I would go so far as to just say to the officer, please give me my ticket and I'll be on my way. You can go and do your job. I know we've both got better things to do. Be polite about it. Smile even. You, the more you can disarm the officer's authority by keeping your cool, the quicker you'll be out of the situation. Now there's some specific instances I wanted to talk about because one thing I learned this weekend which really does disturb me is, uh, you know, if, if an officer asks you to step out of your car in a traffic stop, I didn't think that they had the authority to insist that you did, but they do. And that includes passengers in your car. And they're allowed to frisk you uh, in search of weapons. Now, police can be very intimidating and they, they know this and they use this to their own advantage and they might ask you to empty your pockets or open your trunk or the uh, glove compartment of your car 
or whatever. And if you do any of these things voluntarily, anything that they find that they can use against you, they will. And it will be admissible in court because you volunteered to let them do the search. So it's in your interest not to volunteer to let them do the search. You have to let them pat you down. Unfortunately, a Supreme Court ruling back in the 80s gave police permission to suspect anybody that they decide might be carrying a weapon to pat that person down for weapons. Now what they're looking for is blades and they're looking for firearms. If they find a lump in your pocket and they suspect that it might be contraband, they might ask you to empty your pockets or turn your pockets inside out. They might tell you that they're going to search your pockets and you have the right to say no to that. They might do it anyway. But if you say these words, I do not consent to a warrantless search, and they search you anyway, it should get thrown out in court should they find some contraband. I say it should because it would depend on your legal counsel and other circumstances in the incident. But all by itself, they don't have the right to search you without your consent, especially if you say those words, I do not consent to a warrantless search. It's important. Also important, if a police officer tells you to do something and you are resistant and the officer then comes back and uses these words, I'm giving you a lawful order. That's a code for, if you don't do what I'm about to say, I will arrest you. The order may be lawful and the police may be within their rights to give you that order. It's also possible that they're not within their rights, but they won't care whether they're in their rights or not. If they say, I'm giving you a lawful order and you don't comply, you're going to get arrested. Simple as that. So you have to make that calculation on your own. I could go on and on about various different scenarios, but I really didn't want to labor this video too much with that. Instead, I would just entrust that you please read the links in the description box below. And after you've read them, we can have a discussion about some of the specifics mentioned therein. Um, I might make another video on this topic later this week, uh, discussing more specifics, should I think that need arise based on the conversations we have in the comment section. All right. Anyway, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Remember, cooperation with the police is usually in your interest, but it's not always in your interest. It is certainly always in your interest, though, to behave in a courteous, calm manner. Don't make any sudden moves. Don't put your hands in your pocket. Don't turn your back on a cop. Don't laugh at a cop, etc., etc. Don't run away. Don't give them any excuse whatsoever to think that you could potentially become hostile. By doing that, you've limited their authority to its bare minimum. And that is the best thing that you can do. And it should help expedite the situation. All right. I want to thank you again for watching this video. And until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.